What's up, everybody? A spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Space Engineers Programming 101. Um, when we left off in the last one, I was showing you guys the power management or power usage script. I don't really know what I ended up naming it. Um, I can't remember. Um, actually, should be right in here. Um, oh, no, this is a different code version than what I uploaded. Sorry. As you can tell, I was playing around. I've been toying with the idea of um, how to calculate the um, amount of uranium left or time left on power and how to like uh, factor out batteries or switch whether or not you're running on batteries so it says amount of time de batteries depleted, you know, blah blah blah. Um, I've had some luck, as you can see, I've kind of had some debugging going on on my screen uh, to show me what numbers were returning as what, so I could do math and make sure it was all coming out right, which it's not really. Um, the obvious reason is because this says fuel time 5 hours and mine says 6 minutes, so there's obviously something that calculation-wise conversion rates something that's not going right. Um, but that's not what I want to deal with this episode, because um, that could just be hours of me derping around trying to figure out what the proper equations are and things like that. Actually, if any of you are aware of the proper equation that they use to factor in how much uranium is used and how often and at what rate and all that crap, um, feel free to leave a comment on it, because it might help me out if, it's, if I'm using the wrong equations or something. I feel like I'm doing it right, but it's not coming out right. Um, but that's kind of a problem that could take months for me to figure out. <laughs> like, it's one of those that seems so simple, it's just a basic equation, but getting all the everything ironed out just could take a while. What I'd actually like to work on, I'm going to go ahead and copy this, because I'm pretty sure I have it backed up somewhere. Uh, but just in case I don't... Um, actually, let me put this in the private part here. Uh, Texas, Lord, do you want to try? Oh, uh, okay. I'm sure it's backed up somewhere. Um, I might want to change this. Actually, I just realized I don't have the LCD panel mod on this map, so give me just a second. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's a better screen. Um... So, there's a couple of things that I want to do. Uh, what I'm, I don't know if I've made this clear or not, but uh, what I want to work on is an inventory script. Now, part of this, I'm going to be honest, is because my week has been so hectic, I haven't actually taken the time to sit down, come up with a code, um, and all that kind of stuff. So... I really have to be truthful in that regard that um, it's it's one of those that I'm I'm not really prepared for this. It's not like I've written out the code like last time and go, okay, this works, let me explain it. So this could be good and bad as far as it, it won't be as clean cut as like, hey, this is how the script works if you want to go download it. But it also gives us an opportunity that if you guys would like to, that every week when I put in more code and, and change the script is that you guys can put in your input on things that you'd like to see or functionality that you'd like to have with your inventory script and we can kind of try and encompass encompass like everything that everybody wants to do and make it like this you know little step by step over time kind of this immaculately awesome inventory code which would be really fun I think um, but if you guys would rather me just sit at home and figure it out and then tell you, then in the next episode or something, I'll hopefully have it all ironed out. But I'm open to uh, whatever you guys would like to do. So the first thing is first. as obvious. Um, let's get kind of the code set up. This is not going to do. <laughs> okay, so void main is what we need to start out with. And because, like I said, I'm not really 
prepped for this or already have written things, I'm kind of doing it in the engineer's editor instead of like Visual Studios and then just pasting it over. Which, um, there is a way for any of you that are programmers and, and want to know how, there is a tutorial somewhere in the interwebs that I found for hooking up the um, DLL references for Space Engineer's uh, modding API into Visual Studio so you can get all the IntelliSense stuff. If you don't know what I'm talking about and that went completely over your head, don't really need to worry about it. But that's just for people that may be trying to follow along or come up with their own codes or are familiar with coding but don't know how the, the API works, whatever. Okay, so the first things first... Um, actually, this is a little weird for me. I don't normally use the actual in-game code. Uh, let's get this one. Oh, 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 no, I've got a better idea. For just starting out, let's make, um, let's make a function that returns a string called get all inventory. Um, I'm going to leave that blank at the moment because I don't know what, um... I don't know what arguments I'm going to use just yet. So let's do string is um, final inventory string equals blank, and that way we can start it off, and then we'll have a line for return final inventory string. And then that way all of the rest of our code will go in between there and it will uh, return this. So to start things off, um, let's go ahead and make a commented section for variables. I like to do that kind of stuff. And then um, get inventories and then display data. I like to kind of comment my sections and stuff so that you kind of know what's going on. Well, not just you, but anybody that reads the code can kind of go, oh, okay, this is where you're doing this. Um, so variables. We're going to need... Uh, let's just do... Let's just do variable display, because I don't really recall exactly what I need it to do. Uh, grid terminal... It's very weird not having IntelliSense to just type it out for you. Terminal system... Uh, get... Block... Crap, I don't remember to do with name, maybe? Uh, LCD inventory display is, I think, what we named it. Let's see if that checks out. Okay, so that is the right argument. I wasn't sure if that was the right command. Um, yeah, that's fine. I was going to have a different section for instantiation, but for the moment this will do just to get us up and running. Um, and then down here, I want an update visuals section. This is kind of the code that fixes the whole... Um, it doesn't update the information. So we're going to do display dot show public text. Is that the right one? No. Um, ah, crap. I forget what that code is. It's... Dang it. Okay. Uh, I know there's a... Uh, update visuals... line. And to test that, we can... Visual? There we go. Okay, update visual. Um, I really thought it was show public text. Oh, show public text on screen? Is that what it is? No. Dang it. Hold on a minute. Okay, so I'm kind of dumb. Um, I was fiddling around with this thinking the function was wrong when it was actually because I forgot to cast it as an IMI text panel, so it was dis it was giving me just a straight terminal block. Um, so truth be told, we could actually, if we wanted to be really explicit, uh, we could do IMI text panel here so that it's um, guaranteed that it's like it's it makes it a fractional just tiny little bit easier that the the cpu the process doesn't have to figure out what kind of dis uh, variable it is it just knows okay so displays hooked up 
So for example, let's put in display dot write public text. This is a test. And then false because we don't want it to append. Good. Compiles. Remembers. Yeah, object not set to an instance of an object. Really? It should be set. Why is it no set? Display equals that equals that. It compiles, so there's no errors. Why would it be... Call an exception. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. This is the right name, right? Public text. Okay. Oh! Oh, I'm a dumb. I'm a dumb dumb. It's because this is the public title, not the name of the block. Dur -dur -dur. All right, try that again. Pile, remember, run. Ha ha, success. Okay, so that's all hooked up. Now, what we need, um, I wonder if it'll let me get away with this, just because this is bothering me a little bit. It's kind of that programmer in me um, instantiation, I always, can't, I can't ever remember if I'm spelling that right. Um, kind of one of those just good, it's a cleaner coding practice to have it in separate lines. Um, not really separate lines, but separate areas. You have like variable declarations and then instantiation. It's just better coding practice, in my opinion from what I was taught. Okay, so we also need a couple of variables just to get us going. We're going to move these around a little bit. Um, but what we need is... Uh, how do we want to do this? Let's say cargo containers. Okay. Um, what we'll do is do I my cargo containers container? Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Um, this we're going to do as a list. Cargo container. Um, let's say crates. That's just the one that I like to use. Equals new list. I my cargo container. I think this will work. Let's find out. Yay! No breaking. Okay. Um, and I am going to space that a little bit, just because they're different kinds of variables. I like to do that as well when you've got different groups of things. So let's now do crates equals... Uh, oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, no. We're going to do grid terminal. This one works a little different. Terminal system dot get blocks with type. Uh, I, I think this is the right. I my cargo container, right? Maybe. Let's find out. And then it goes into crates. Let's see if that'll compile. I might have the syntax wrong. Yep. Okay. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. accepting the first argument of type. Could be found. Are you missing using directive or an assembly reference? Possibly. It's a type, but it's used like a variable. Ah, maybe that's why. Uh, hold on a minute. Let me check the syntax. All right, finally got it right. Uh, this is a little tricky one to work with. So first you have to declare it as an I my terminal block, then make it crates. List is terminal block. And then give it the type get blocks of, not with. So grid terminal system dot get blocks of type. I my, ter I my cargo container and then store it in crates. But your list that you're storing it into needs to be of the terminal block type, I think. I could try a cast. I'm kind of curious myself. 
uh, if we could just cast it in as cargo container. Not that it would really matter. No, it's not going to work. Um, now, the other thing we could try is let me cut this. Get rid of this. I want to see if, now that I've got the syntax right, if we went ahead and made this cargo container, if it would work. No. Okay, so it has to be... Oops! What the... No. Un no, undo. What is going on? I don't know what it's doing. Crap. Just completely backpedaled all that. Dang it. Alright. Well, I might... Oh. List... Let me go ahead and just copy this. I really don't like the coding syntax that they have for everything. I, my, this, I, my, that. It's kind of complicated. Um, crates equals new list. Like that. And to instantiate, we'll do... Um, grid, terminal, system, get blocks of type. Oh, and we have to do the greater than, less than. I my cargo container, and then put that in crates. There we go. And perfect. All right. So now that we have this hooked up, it's going to find anything that's a cargo crate. Large, small, doesn't matter. It won't have reactors. Um, and it won't have refineries, etc., 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 etc. There are a couple ways that we'll end up changing this. This is mostly just for demonstration to kind of get an idea of what we're doing um, and how we're going to do it. But we'll eventually end up um, modifying where we instantiate what we're instantiating you know we might not have a bunch of variables that have different um, uh, different types we might just have one I my terminal block list and just store anything with an inventory in it it just depends on how we want to end up doing things but for starting off um, what we're gonna do is a loop here I is less than crates dot I think with a list you can do count arrays or length pretty sure. We'll try it. It'll it'll flag it if it won't work. Um, and then we'll do like this. Okay, so from here, what we're gonna do, just for the heck of it... Oh. Um, actually... No. No, no, no. What we're actually going to do... Um, we're going to leave this blank for now. What we're going to do here is go get all inventory. Um, and what I'm going to do is make an argument for a list I my terminal block of um, we'll call this crates for now. Is that all we need? That should be all we need. And then we're going to just put crates in here. So because this exists outside of this uh, function, we're basically just instantiating the list so that it has all the crates inventory and then we're passing it into the get all function. So now we can kind of work down here and do what I was going to do up there a second ago, which is get inventories. Um, so we'll do four... This will just save us a little time later when we end up uh, augmenting what we were going to do up there as far as adding more to this loop and things like that. It'll make it easier if it's already here in this function. Okay, so from here uh, we also need a few variables up here as well. Let's make them a new line. Um, go ahead and comment this. Okay, 
So what I want to do is, oh, how does this go? I'm not looking at the at the list anymore. Um, let's see if I remember how to do this. I my inventory. Or wait, no, I don't need to do all of this. I need to do a list of I my inventory item type. We're gonna call this all items, and that is a capital I. It's two lowercase l's and a capital I. It's hard to see. Um, equals new list I my inventory item. Uh, like that. So that'll make us give us a new blank list. Now, for this, it's okay to declare them in the loop because we're going to get rid of them after the loop closes anyway. Um, the only one that we needed to make sure stays outside of the loop to continue to format the strings and everything is the all items, which is the list of all of each item in it. Um, now, there's a couple of things that we can do in the future of like if it's a large crate, if it's this crate, we can list it by individual crates. We could list it by individual items. There's a lot of different ways we can do that. You guys let me know how you'd want to see it. Like, what's the most um, useful thing that you can think of to find, basically? Like, would you just want all of your inventory, don't care what crate it's in, or do you want to see what's in each crate, you know, all that kind of stuff? Because you can do it a bunch of different ways. Um, for now, I'm just going to display all, all the crates. In, in one line. Well, not one line, but one uh, list. Uh, this is basically similar. It's a little bit more refined. I have a little bit more of a uh, knee-jerk kind of code in my survival world, but this is kind of doing the same thing. Um, so what we're going to do is go... I... My, we can just do variables for, for this, I guess. We'll say owner equals, and we'll do a cast of I my inventory owner and we're gonna do crates at index of I right yes maybe we'll, f we'll find out in a minute if this works and then we're gonna do inventory equals a cast of I my inventory we're gonna do owner dot oh crap what's the uh, I forget how this goes it's <laughs> get crap hold on okay so I got what I was going for I did correct a few things for one there was no I here some of you may have noticed that and I didn't um, so what you do is we go owner equals I my inventory owner crates at index of I uh, inventory equals I my inventory owner dot get inventory zero and then inventory dot get items goes into items and then all items which is existing outside this loop so all th these are going to fall off after the loop um, then goes to add range and then you add items and items is basically the same thing as all items it's an I my inventory item list so you're adding the range of between this this list start and end point basically um, and then it just keeps looping through all of your crates basically and it just keeps adding all the item amounts to the string uh, or to the I'm sorry to the list my bad um, then what you can do and what's it's what we're gonna do right here there might be more streamlined ways to do it in the future but uh, this is how we're gonna tackle it for now is then go to all items dot I'm gonna try count it might be length um, it might be length oops okay get back in there um, Alright, so we have another loop that's now going to loop through all of the items we just added from all of our crates, but now we're going to basically parse it together with a string. So um, what we'll do, I'm trying to remember how I did this, it's going to be final inventory string plus equals um, all items at i dot 
uh, or wait, dot subtype sub name name. Crap, I can't remember how this goes. Um, give me just another second. Okay, so I found it. I found it. Found it. Um, I had it kind of right, but backwards. It's content dot subtype should list the name of the object that we're that's in question. Um, and let's do a nice little equal symbol. How's that? Oh, wait. <laughs> when parsing a string, always add pluses between each things. Between each things. Wow, grammar. Um, and then we'll do all items dot or items at i uh, dot amount. I've heard there is a dot raw value command, but I don't really know what the difference is. Um, actually, let's find out. So we can do amount, and then we'll do a plus. We'll give it one, two, three, four. Or wait, no. How uh, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, and then let's say this is raw, and then we'll do a plus all items i dot amount dot raw. Uh, I can't see what I'm doing. Val, you semicolon, maybe. Oh crap! I can't. Why can't I see what I'm doing? Raw value. Dang nabbit. Alright, so from here, from that line, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to paste this in in a second. Um, I don't know why. This is why I don't like using the in-game uh, thing. Value. And then we're going to do a plus, and we're going to do a new line character. So that uh, it will make a new line for each item that it finds. Now this does not take into account, uh, let's, ooh, okay, what do we get? Subtype and no extension method, subtype, accepting first argument of type. Hmm. Um, wait a minute, was, was that the only error? Uh, could be found, any minute. okay, so that's line, okay. Uh, let me see, see, it didn't like this part, so let me check this out. That's because it helps if you do it right. Subtype name is actually the code. There it goes. So subtype name, amount, and then we're going to test the raw value and then make a new line for the next one. And it's basically going to loop through all of the items it finds. Now, the one thing that is bad about this, which if you've seen my survival series, you'll already know, um, is it doesn't... Uh, ooh, okay. Let's, let's uh, tone this down a bit, shall we? Um, it doesn't differentiate between things you've already seen. So, for example, you can see... Let's see if we can find... Um, a duplicate somewhere. There should be a duplicate somewhere. Anywhere? Oh, fine. Be that way. Um, so, one thing that you're seeing here, the raw data... Uh, it doesn't seem to have decimal point, which is really weird. I'm not sure why you would use that. Um, like, motors is 72 total. Or, no, not total, just somewhere. So we have 72 motors, right? Um, why you would do 72, 0, 0, 0, 0, Like, I don't know why you would ever use that value, because there's no defining decimal point that I can tell. So that's a little weird. Uh, but for example, just for example, let's see, what's the last thing? Stone. Okay. So, let's find some stone. It's probably in the refinery. Uh, that's the assembler. Refinery. Stone. Dang it. Stone. Eh. Where's the stone? I am losing my marbles. I don't see any stone anywhere. Wait, maybe over here? No. Dang it, man! 
<laughs> Where's the stone that it's finding? Do we have storage containers under here? I thought these were all conveyor tubes. They are. Where is this mystery stone? What is going on? Oh, connector? Is it in the connector? Or this crate, maybe? Nope. Nope. I have no idea where that's getting the stone from. Grinders? Could it really be in the grinders? Uh, oh, that's a conveyor. I was like, why can't I get in that? Let's try a search, maybe. St okay. Um. Where, oh, where, if I were stone? I don't. That's very strange. Here's an idea. Um, I don't know if I did this all- No, they're all set to me. Holy crap, why is it finding stone? It should not be finding stone. Um, and it even says there's 20 of them. Stone equals 20, magnesium equals 44, cobalt 70, nickel. That sounds like the original, like, or like this one. Cobalt, nickel, magnesium, gravel. Ah, found you. So that's an interesting thing. This is what we were talking... Or I mentioned this in my survival series. Um, that sometimes things are not what they appear, like display-wise. So you would have to go in and say, if it's equal to stone, then make the display name say gravel. Um, and like bulletproof glass is all one word. You'd have to parse that out, things like that. That's all the stuff that I'm intrigued to see like what you guys would want to do. Would you want it formatted a certain way? Have some on one screen, some on another screen? Have it separated by what kind of container it's in? Show individual container? I mean, there is so much you can do with an inventory that I think it would actually be fun instead of me just coming up with one to actually get input from you guys and do something that everybody wants to see. But, for example, what I try to say about the duplicates is let's take these. Um, give me half of them. And I'm going to put it in the assembler. Okay? Now, if my timer block is set up to run the script, it may have already changed it. Yep, it did. So stone equals 10, but we should see stone somewhere else. Oh, no. I just have it set for cargo containers. I didn't think of that. Hold on. Um, let's put it in the large one, then. Okay, now, whenever this updates... Um, blink, blink, blink. Okay. So now we should be able to see a second listing of stone somewhere. Stone equals 10. So that's the danger with how this is set up right now is it doesn't check to see if it's already found an object. Um, so you can get this laundry list of things, but there's a lot of duplicates. If you've got... This is kind of a bad example because there's... They've got it set up to where there's not more than one thing going on. Um, and by the way, I don't like this raw thing. I'm gonna take this out. I honestly don't really know what use it has on anything. Okay. So, recompile that. Remember. Now, I'm actually curious. I don't want to run it. I want to wait. Yep, there it goes. So, our updating of the visuals on the screen does work perfectly. So, alright. So, that is going to wrap things up for this part. Um, we kind of got a basic semblance of if you just wanted a list of things um, in your accessible space. This is how you could do it. Um, however, it is not very refined or anything at all, so let me know which way you guys would rather do it. Would you rather go just come up with a bunch of cool things to do with it and then do it? Would you rather do part by part, little at a time, step by step, and create this like massively complex inventory system? Um, display and sorting, like all kinds of stuff? And then just every week you guys could give me more suggestions on functions and things to add to the inventory system? Things like that. Um, either way, let me know which way you'd want to do it. If you do want to do the compartmentalized, modular, uh, week at a time, you know, input 
at a time type thing, um, just go ahead and leave your suggestions on what you'd like to see next time. If you want to see it all at once, just go ahead and leave the suggestions and then go, this is stuff I'd like to see it, but just go ahead and have it done kind of thing. And I will do my darndest to try and have it done by the next episode, or at least those functions implemented. So let me know what you guys think. In the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace!